Hey everybody, today Rado previews a prototype of Honey Buzz, but before I get going, please turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goose, you'll know what they are. And if you've done that, then welcome to the forest everybody, where all the woodland critters have come to our bee market where we are going to sell them delicious honey in exchange for precious points in the form of coins! And uh, to be able to generate the honey to sell to all these ravenous critters, I need to start building up my beehive. I've already got the beginnings of one right here. I am the green player, which means I've got all the green beehive tokens. And as part of setup, you're always going to be able to have a different configuration for your beehive. The game comes with a bunch of different ones. I've got the one I like to call the Scorpion here, where my four starting tiles are in this layout, although the um, arrangement of them was random, where the different actions are. So, I've got my beehive set up, ready to start working it, to go out to the local fields, to collect nectar from the different flowers, to bring it back, so that I can start making honey, so that I could sell at the market and score lots of points. And, I'm going to be doing a solo run through today, which means it's just me and my bees, and uh, there are two drone bees placed here, these lovely little um, black uh, bees, that are completely blocking right now two different worker placement spots, which means I cannot right now uh, get any of these three honeycomb pieces, even if I wanted them. And uh, there is going to be this solo deck that determines every turn what the, uh, the drone bee is going to do to basically trigger the end of the game because I am racing against time. Uh, specifically because before the game is over, I have to score at least 30 points off of these three queen contest cards. Let's take a look at them so I know what my goals are. Alrighty. I, if, uh, for every set of all four nectar types, I, well, I get points. If I don't have any, I lose points. So I want to get as many full sets as possible. If I have empty cells at the end of the game, I score points from that. And the more, the better. Although empty cells is not a good thing. You want cells full of nectar. And finally, the fewer workers I have, the more points I get. So I might never want to, even though I could get up to 10 worker bees, I might want to stop at 4 so I can get 15 points off of that. I'm going to have to do some combination of these three things to score at least 30 points or I instantly lose. Um, and then, if I don't lose, I'll, there's a chart I can see how well I did. Um, and I should say, this is slightly different from the way multiplayer Queen's contests work. There are um, these looking cards, which by the way give you a better idea of what they're really going to look like. Remember, everything you're seeing here is a prototype today. You can check out the Kickstarter page to get an idea of what the final game will look like. But uh, in a multiplayer game, we have lots of races to be the first to complete three orders, or collect two different types of nectar, or um, have the most of a given thing by the end of the game. Every time you play, there's always going to be three Queen's contests, uh, whether you're playing solo or multiplayer, that mixes things up quite a bit. Alright, so we've got our Queen's Contest in mind. I've got my starting beehive over here. I've got my starting five coins, which basically means five points, and my one little bee worker. Okay, and these are the orders, and I'm ready to go. Now, how does the game work? Well, like I said, it is a worker placement game, so on my turn, I will take my worker and visit one of the areas. But remember, the drone bees that only exist in the uh, solo game they are blocking these two spaces, so I cannot go to either of them. And that's a little bit different. Uh, if I were playing a multiplayer game, and say one of my opponents had come over here, I could still go here, but because they'd send one bee, I'd have to send a stack of two bees. And if I wanted to go there again, or some other player wanted to go in the round, then they'd have to set a group of three. And so there's like this escalation of workers that have to go to a space to activate. But in the solo game, there's just me, potentially blocking myself, and these drones that completely block off the area. So, even if I would like to build up my um, beehive with this money-generating honeycomb, or the Queen's Decree honeycomb, they are unavailable to me now. So where am I going to go instead? You know what, I think this is going to be a pretty standard opening move for most players. I'm going to come over here and grab one of these tiles, because these are the larva tiles, which means I can grow more workers. As you might imagine, that's pretty important. So I'm going to take one of these, and now I've got to add it to my uh, little hive over here. And the main rule about expanding your hive is, the new tiles you get, well, they've got walls, dark walls, 
light walls, and then open spaces that allow you know traversal. You always have to put this down so that the open spaces match other open spaces. So something like this would be legal, because the open space here is the open space here. But something like this would not, because open space with a light wall is no good. Also, this wouldn't work, because, um, again, open space up to a wall. So. Um, this restriction pretty much ensures that over the course of the game, I'm going to be making a tight, natural-looking honeycomb. And so I've got to decide where to put this. And what I'm trying to do when I place this is create a complete empty cell. Like if I put this here, then I will have made an empty cell. And that's a place where later on I can collect nectar from the wildflowers out in the field and put it here so I can start generating honey. The other reason I want to create empty cells like this is because when I do, I get to activate all the different um, actions around it. So in this case, if I put this here, I would have created a cell uh, to put nectar in and I would get to um, do the larva action twice, which means boom, boom, I will have grown two more workers and I will get to do the forage action as well. Whereas instead, if I say put this up here, then I'd create this cell and I'd get to do two larva and a forage and I'd get to fan. So I'd get to do even more actions. And on the flip side, is say I put this over here like this. Well, I'm starting to get ready to make another empty cell, but since I didn't complete anything, I don't trigger any actions at this point. So what am I going to do? I think I am going to, even though this would arguably be a little bit better because I get to do a forage and a fanning action, there's a little bit of a gamble. It might not be a good time for me to use my fan to um, generate honey right now because when I go and forage, I might not find the nectar I need. And if I don't find nectar, I would have wasted that action. So instead, I'm just going to come over here. We'll place it like this. And of course, I could, I could place it either way, this way or this way. And that could matter because, you can, as you can see, eventually I'm going to try and create an empty cell around here, which means when I come create this one, I'll get a queen's decree and a larva. Whereas if I built it like this, and then later on as I expand, I'd get a queen's decree, but nothing. So um, I got to decide, where do I want this larva? Do I want it facing um, so I'll be able to activate over here with this forage or over here? Actually, I think I'd rather start working on a queen's decree because they're, that's the most powerful action you can do. So I'll place this like that. Alrighty, so I placed a worker, grabbed a tile, and then I put it somewhere following the rules. And because I've created an empty cell, I get to activate all these things. And I can activate these in any order I want, which sometimes is hugely important. But right now, it's pretty straightforward. I'm going to, these two larvae are going to grow up, and boom, boom. I've got two more workers, which I will be able to get access to a little bit later. And I get to do a forage action, which is a major portion of this game. As part of setup, um, I basically set up the fields for a two-player game, which is basically how you set up for a solo game. As you can see, there are um, four rosemary, four acacia, four cherry blossom, and four wildflower tiles. Now, I don't know what's on the other side of these, but I do have a rough idea because two, half of the wildflower tiles are um, or I'm sorry, uh, these are the rosemary. Half of these purple rosemary tiles are rosemary. The, two, the other two are either going to be wildflowers or acacias because uh, you know this is the corner, so there's two of these, one of these, and one of these. Up here in the cherry blossom area, two of these four tiles are cherry blossoms, and again, one of them is an acacia and one is a wildflower. And it's very important when I go foraging that I find the right type of flower. Um, because over here, I have made one honey cell. And if I look a bit more closely, you'll notice that the this honey cell is made of different color walls. Two dark walls, a light wall, and a light wall. Now, what that means is a particular type of nectar can go into that slot. And it's all reminded right here. Everybody gets one of these player aids that reminds us what all the actions are we can do with our worker placement. But it also reminds us what type of flowers we can collect. Two dark walls and two light walls means I can collect cherry blossom nectar. Right. Which is why that means if I want to go foraging, I want to go foraging over here because I've got a 50-50 chance of finding cherry blossom. If I come over here, I've only got a 1 in 4 chance. And over here, a 1 in 4 chance. And over here, there aren't any. 
So, I can go foraging wherever I want, but because I have made this type of cell, that means I'm specifically looking for cherry blossoms, and as you might imagine, that's going to be the best place. Now, how does foraging work? Well, basically it means I pick any of these face-down tiles, I look at it, and if it's a tile that I can actually house in my honeycomb, I get to claim the tile. And I say, hooray! I'm going to start making honey, everybody! But if it's not, if it's the wrong type of tile, if it's a tile that I cannot house, then I have to put it back face down, and it stays a secret. Only I know what it is. Although, if I was playing with other players, other players would know what it's not. Um, because, just through, uh, you know, you know, common deduction, if I drew this and everybody can see I have room for a cherry blossom, and when I take it, if I don't put it here after I find out what it is, everybody knows this isn't a cherry blossom, which means it must be a wildflower or an acacia. So, even when it's not your turn, if other players are foraging, you can be gathering valuable information. Potentially. Right, so, I've already grown my two larvae, now I'm going to go foraging, I'm going to pick one of these, and fingers crossed, find a cherry blossom. And we will go with this one. And it is. I had a 50-50 chance, and it paid off. That cherry blossom means it slots in here, and I have got my first nectar tile that means I could start generating cherry blossom honey, which is valued at seven bucks or seven points. That's some of the more valuable uh, stuff. Very, very nice. Okay, and now you'll notice nothing else comes out. I mean, you know, these are first come, first serve. Once they're gone, they're gone. And um, while I've gotten rid of an empty cell, I have started getting a set of four different nectar types. Now, I want to start trying to get the other nectar types, because once I've got one set, I am um, no longer losing five points at the end of the game. Phew! Okay, now you might be asking though, what happens if I had drawn, let's say I had drawn this one instead, and like, no! It's a wildflower! Well, which again, there was a one in four chance that it would have been a wildflower, or a 50 50 chance I would have failed. What happens is, again, I put it back down. I know what that is, which could be useful information for me in the future. Everybody else knows it's not a cherry blossom. And as a consolation prize, I collect some pollen. And pollen ain't bad either, because you can sell pollen at the beginning of a game for six bucks. Uh, and if you're playing with four players, or, and three players as well, you can start. it's worth seven. And it's, in a solo or two player game, everything starts out one step below the uh, bottom, which means they all should have started there like that. There we go. That's right. Okay. Sorry, I didn't get that quite set up right. That's why you watch with the Klingon subtitles turned on. I'm sure Paulo already pointed out those were in the wrong space. Anyway, so if I guess wrong, I get valuable information, and I get some pollen that I could sell later on as well. But in this case, I, even better, I nailed it! Okay. And that was my turn. I have done those three actions. And, um, okay. It is now, if there were another player, it would be their turn. And if they wanted to go and get one of these larva honeycombs so that they could grow more workers, well, they would have to come here with double bees. You know, a set of two bees to be able to come here. But the solo player doesn't work that way. Instead, he just goes on ahead and does whatever the next card he draws says. So the first card he's drawing is Rosemary. Okay, and what that means is. Well, it means I have a choice. Uh, it's interesting, uh, for, for the uh, drone player, I actually get to make choices quite a bit. I can either eliminate one of the Rosemary tiles from the game. It would be as if another human player had successfully taken one. So I could remove it, I'll find out what it is, so at least I'll have a better idea of what the remaining ones are, or, if I don't want, because I'm desperate to get some rosemary, the other option I could do is, it, I could pretend this means they had sold some rosemary, which means the value of rosemary would drop. It would go from being worth six bucks a pop to five bucks a pop. Which means if I was saving up to sell a lot of rosemary, well, I'd be a bit sadder because the price dropped a little bit. And I don't want the prices to drop at all yet, and I don't mind him taking one because he'll take one, but again, that lets me know a better idea of what's remaining. So he's just going to take one of the purple rosemary. It is this one, and ooh, it was the wildflower. Okay, so this is effectively out of the game. It's like another player had taken it. So now of these three remaining ones, I know two are rosemary, and one of them is an acacia. 
All righty, but I don't know which is which. So, also, uh, so this is the card that tells him what he does. This is the card that says, move the drones around. And it's specifically saying, in this case, move the left drone, the one on the left side, into the space where there is uh, the $5 honeycombs and the Royal Decree honeycombs. Now, as it is, he's already there. So that means he's just going to stay here, which means this space still stays blocked to me. And that's it. The drone turns are super easy. Um, barely an inconvenience, and uh, it is my turn again. So, well, you'd say, hey, I'm out of workers. I can't do any more work, right? That's correct. Once you're out of workers, you have no choice. You have to spend an entire turn recalling workers. And, you know, that's, that's, that's kind of a downer. I'm wasting time in this race. But on the flip side, I'm recalling three. I started with one, now I've got three. And also, this is important, when you spend your turn recalling workers, you also get to scout, which is like foraging, except you don't get to take whatever you find. You just get to looky-loo, peek at stuff, and you have a better idea of what things are, and then you put it back, whatever it is, and you just have to remember what it is you've seen. So, what do I want? Well, the interesting thing is, I'm about set up to do another um, cherry Blossom Space, because you can see, this is Dark Wall, Dark Wall, Light Wall. If I put a Light Wall up here, again, that means I would be able to get another Cherry Blossom. So, there is one Cherry Blossom left here. And if I'm going to try and go for more Cherry Blossoms, it'd be kind of handy to have some idea of what I'm looking for. So, I'm going to peek at this. And it is... Or, oh, actually, I already did peek, didn't I? Let's go on ahead and shuffle them up. Because I have no idea. Oh, and I just accidentally... I'm terrible at this. All right, shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Never ever shuffle. This is my shuffling song. Boop, boop. All right, so there we go. So now I'm just going to peek at one of these. Let's see what this one is. And all right, it's the other cherry blossom. I know where it is, which means I know for a fact that um, one of these is acacia and one of these is wild uh, flower, which could be useful for me later on in the game. Alrighty, so I, I know my target, I have found it. Now, nobody else knows anything other than I know what that is, but I don't reveal anything. Alright, so that was my turn. Uh, my whole turn was just drawing stuff back, peeking, and uh, now it is the drones player again. And he says, Acacia! So again, he's going to do the same thing. He's going to take away one of these Acacias, or he's going to drop the market value. I don't want that market value to drop, so I'll just let him take one of these randomly. It'll be this one. And there went one of the Acacias. So now one, so one of these three an acacia, one is a cherry blossom, and one is a rosemary. Okay, and he says, hey, move the drone over here. Hooray! You know what? I've got enough workers to go for a while now. Um, so he's opened up a big opening space for me. Because remember, in this game, I don't want to get that many workers, which is crazy. Normally you want to get... I mean, 10 workers is a big deal. But this time, I'm going to try and keep my worker uh, footprint low. Alright, so here we go. I've now got a new option. I could come over here, which means I could get one of these two tiles. Although, the Queen's dec Decree tiles are tricky because they cost... Five coins. I have to give up five points to take one of those. But the reason for that is because the Queen's Decree is the most powerful action. It's a wild card. It means when this gets activated, I can do anything. Right, okay. And what, what does anything mean? This is a list of all the actions. You have seen me forage for nectar. You have seen me grow new worker bees. But you haven't seen me do Queen's Orders. Um, or do some accounting, which just gets me some money. Or, uh, you know, sell or, you know, sell pollen or produce honey. All right. So, what am I going to do? Well, I am going to send one of my worker bees someplace. And it'll probably be to fill this space in so that I can make another complete... Yeah, it'll probably be that. And... And here's the thing. Remember, when I do this, when I fill this in, I will activate all the actions around here, which means I'll grow another worker. Even though the worker placement space is blocked, I'll grow another one. And I'll go foraging again. And I will get to fan. And whatever I put in this slot, I'll get to do also. So, how about we uh, say, I will come here, and while I could pay five points to do a wild card, I'm instead just going to make some money. Because points is points. All right, I'm just going to slop that in there. Boom. And all right, I am now going to get to do all four of these actions, any order I want. Let's start out just making five more coins. I am rich, rich, I tells you. Okay, and this game is a game that you score well in excess of 100 points. So, um, five points is not nothing, but it adds up over time. So now, I could fan, but I got nothing to fan. Well, that's not true. I do. I could start fanning this nectar and growing honey, but I don't want to do that yet. I'll come back to that in a second. Right now, I'm just going to grow 
another uh, larva into another worker bee for the future. I'm going to go foraging again. And remember, I, I, I know what I need. Because it's two uh, dark walls, two light walls in this particular configuration. And since I already scouted, I know where it is. There's no risk of me getting the wrong thing. Boom! Nailed it. Okay. And so, I have grown. I've made money. I have forged. Now I will fan. And what that means is, I take my little fan icon. Although this isn't necessary. This is just a bit of uh, them thematic, uh, thematic flourish. Because this is what bees do. You know, they actually fan their wings to help, you know, the, the, the honey. Uh, you know, solidify and grow and all that. I can put this fan on any space I want. And every nectar space that's adjacent will generate honey. So I could put it here. Or here. And that means both of these would generate honey. I could put it over here if I want, or over here, but that would be silly because I'd only generate one honey. Uh, and that's why I wanted to harvest first so that I could be more efficient and generate two delicious cherry blossom honey. So boom, grows there, and boom, grows there. All right. And I'm done fanning. That was very successful. Now I've got some honey I could sell at the market in a future turn. And currently, Cherry Blossom sells for six a pop. After you're done selling, it doesn't matter how many you sell, uh, whatever it is you sold drops in value by one. So ideally, I'd like to collect a lot more. But on the flip side, I don't want to get any more Cherry Blossoms. Because remember, I've got to start getting sex of unique uh, nectar instead of just getting all these individuals. So anyway, that was my turn. I did four actions. That was pretty good. Let's see what the drone is going to be up to this time. The drone says, Pollen and Highest Honey. So that means uh, it's like he's done a big sale. Pollen drops in value and the highest value drops as well. So Acacia Honey just dropped by one. If it was a tie like this, I would have got, you know, Pollen always drops and one of them would drop. It would be my choice which one. Okay. And he says he now wants to block the uh, forage space. All right, so there we go. So it is my turn again. And I still have... Wait a minute, didn't I have three bees? Where's my third bee? I Because, yeah, yeah, I, I should have three bees. Here, okay. So now it is my turn again. And I could send out a single bee here or here, because there's nothing, or I could send a double bee here if I wanted to do grab another one of these honeycombs. This is what you do every turn. You activate a worker placement space, and you, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, you know, get a new honeycomb and expand and hopefully trigger a lot of, a bunch of, a big combo string of actions. And since he's not blocking me, I think, well, first of all, I don't want to grab one of these because this would be, means I could trigger a fan action. And there's no reason for me to fan anything right now because as you can see, all my nectar is full. But I could take this and potentially get into a spot where I trigger a market action, which means I could start selling things. Now, if I wanted to sell, when you go to the market, you pick one thing to sell. One type of, of honey or completing one of these three orders. And the orders are pretty simple. Hey, if I have these two honey, I can get five points and... I will trigger a bonus action. Now, that's not that great right now. Right now, if I had these two honey, that would be worth a total of 12 points, but it would take me two actions to sell them separately. Or no, I'm sorry, 11 points, because this would be worth six, this would be worth five. Instead, with a single action, I could sell them both for pretty much half value, but get an extra action out of it. And then I'd reveal the one that's underneath this that would be a bigger order that I could fulfill later for even more points. So, am I going to go to the market? Well, you know, normally, if it weren't for this try to get unique sets, I would probably want to try and get at least a third uh, cherry blossom before I went to sell so I could sell all three of them. But, you know, that's pushing your luck because other players, if you see them building up cherry, cherry blossom honey, they might rush and sell and drop the price out from underneath you. Uh, and again, he might do that to me. I, I can't be sure. And also, since I don't want to get any more unique nectar types, I need to get sets. If I get, so say if I don't get any more cherry, if I get two of each of the other ones, that's going to be 10 points of the 30 points I need to get. So, yeah, what the heck? Let's go to market. Well, not necessarily. So, this is where I've sent my worker, and I get to place this somewhere. And now I'm in a bit of a risk. Uh, well, no, no. Next turn, I could come over here and I could grab um, you know, this as well. Um, but if there's a situation where, on my turn, I either ha don't have any honeybees or I don't have enough to be able to place out on the board, then I have to 
skip my turn, recall everything, and scout and pick one thing. All right, so anyway, I'm going to build this. Now, here's the problem. I was so excited about going to the market for you guys, except I'm not, because no matter where I put this, I cannot complete a honeycomb right now. I can't, uh, And so, I'm going to have to build up for something later, which means I should pay attention to where I'm going to put this, because as you can see, it's got, uh, they're all the same. They've got the black, or you know, the, the dark walls on the side, the light walls on the other side, and so where am I going to put this? By the way, speaking of these dark walls, you can see those dark uh, and light walls are on these as well. You, you know, there's a visual reminder that this nectar can go into dark walls on the side and white walls on the ends. Although there's a, this dumb mistake, they, they, for some reason they didn't make these walls white as a reminder. See how everything slots in? Oh, the dark goes to the dark, the white goes to the white. I just forgot to do that, or I did do it here. But it's, I, I'm assuming it's just the prototype that they forgot to actually make the edges of these white to replicate. That to get an acacia, which is the toughest thing to get, you need to have one side of dark walls and two sides of white walls to snag those types. Anyway, though. So, I don't want to put this in such a way that I'd be making another empty cell that would allow me to collect more cherry blossom honey because I need to get unique stuff. Um, so, putting it here for example, would not necessarily be a good thing. Because, hey, I'm doing a dark, a white, a white, and then I'd have to put a dark over here. And, um, you know, boom, I blew it. Although not necessarily. Because I could go for a long build. You know, if I, if I later on came like this, then it's another cherry blossom, which is not great. Although, that wouldn't be bad. Because remember, I need to have a certain number of empty cells by the end of the game. But as an alternative way, I could build like this. And then I say, you know, I grabbed another money-making one, like this. And then, when all was said and done, I have made an empty cell that has one side dark and uh, two sides light, which means an acacia nectar could go in that. And again, they are the most valuable. So, anyway, I'm not, I mean, that's more long-term thinking. There's a surprising amount of long-term thinking. Where am I going to put this? Um, well, one tricky thing is thinking about what do I know? I um I know one of these is wildflower and one is acacia. I know two of these are rosemary. So I think maybe I should start trying to make a rosemary type because I've got a, a better than 50/50 chance. You know, I've I've got a uh, you know, a 66% chance of finding the right type of rosemary. So maybe I should start making that. And what is a rosemary outline? It's like this where you've got two dark and a, a light wall, or you know, a light wall. So, how would I start building towards that? Well, if I went like this, let's say. Then, if I put something else over in this spot, it would be white, and this would become a good place for rosemary. And it means I'd be able to forage. Oops, sorry, I'm not showing you. If I put it like this, that would make the dark, and I'd put a white here. That would be a rosemary spot, and I'd be able to forage. And right after foraging, I could go to the market, let's say. Or, I could do the same thing down here. And this would be even better because, hey, when I activate this, it would mean it would be... Ooh, that means if I activate this, it would be my fifth worker, which is not good because, remember, I want to keep my... I, that would mean I'd be losing five points to get a fifth worker. Although I don't have to activate this space if I don't want to. And the important thing is this means market and anything I want. Right. Let's go on ahead and build down there. Let's build down here. So I'm, I'm getting ready to collect rosemary down there, but I'm not going to get trigger any actions because I did not actually um, complete an empty cell. All right, so that was my turn. The uh, drone goes again. What you up to, drone? Drone says, order card. All right, that means the drone wipes out uh, one of these order cards. It's like he fulfilled an order. And um, you know, if I was playing against a human player, I'd have no control. But in the solo game, I get to pick which one of these gets wiped out. And um, I don't think I want this one because, hey, this is going to require rosemary and cherry blossoms. I'm planning on getting some cherry blossoms so I could sell this, which means I could get access to another market action. I could have a very powerful turn. So I don't want to destroy one of these. I'll go on ahead and have him destroy this one which because I'm not collecting acacia or wildflowers yet at all. This is out of the game. That's six points and a fanning action I don't do. But I have now revealed Mr. Bear here who um, wants... Ooh, that's even better. I've got the two uh, rosemary. If I can get an acacia, I could sell to him, get 11 points, and do a fanning action. All right. That might change up what I'm going for. All right, we'll worry about that. So that is what he did, and his drone worker says, hey, if you're not already doing it, cover up the uh, fanning action, which he did, which I'm totally cool with. He's done. It's my turn again. I've got one more worker, and 
the only place I can go. If I had two workers, I could go here or here. But with only one worker, this is the only place I can go. And I am happy to go here. It means I am going to, if I finish this off, which I think I'm going to, boop. There we go. I have, now I'm going to trigger all four of these actions, and I will get to forage, I will get to go to market, and I'll get to do anything I want, in any order I want. And so, how am I going to make this go? Well, first of all, I've got this tough choice. If it's, I lose five points if I take that fifth worker. If I'm going to take a fifth worker, though, you better believe I'm going to take the sixth worker. Um, and six workers is significantly better than four. And remember, eventually, if I fill this up, this would be another opportunity. Or if I fill this up, this would be another opportunity to get that sixth worker. And can I afford to lose five of the target points I have to get? Because remember, i got to get 30 of my points and my end score have to come from this. Currently, if I stay at four workers, that's 15. If I go up to five or six workers, it's 10. Which just means i got to get five more points from someplace else. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. it might, I might regret this later, but okay, we just grew another little bee. Alrighty. And let's go... Uh, let's go foraging. Right. Because I've got the slot, and remember, I've got a 66% um, a chance of finding the rosemary that I want. Fingers crossed. I will pick this one. No! Acacia! Alright, so, what that means is, I put this back down. If I were playing against other human players... They would um, not know what I did. But again, they would be able to say, they would know for a fact, it is not Rosemary because I, if it was Rosemary, I would have claimed it because I have the working space. It was an Acacia. Alrighty. And, and because I missed out, I get my first pollen, which isn't the end of the world because I can sell pollen for five now. It's gotten a bit cheaper because of the drone, which again, replicates what other players might do. Alrighty. So I didn't get what I wanted. That was a failure. But hey, you know what? I could go again, because this could be anything. Let's go again. And here's the thing. Just in the time it took for me to explain all that, I've totally forgotten which one I just flipped. And I this is my big problem with this system. I hate memory in games. I literally... I think it was this one I did, but I'm not 100% certain. Was it this one? Yeah, it was. Okay. See, um, this, uh, the, 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 this, um, this foraging system, which I love. I absolutely adore this idea of... Oh, what do you call it? Um... Can't think of the words. Uh, you know, deduction. Seeing what other players do, figuring out through process of elimination what might be there is great. Except you have to have a mind like a steel trap to remember everything you've seen. Um, which is why, for the rest of this run through, I'm going to pretend. Hey, I'm solo. I'm going to say I have a mind like a steel trap. I'm just going to leave this face up because there's no other players here to know what it is. This means I know what it is. I've peaked. All right, but more importantly, I now know for a fact. So. It doesn't matter. Either one of these is going to have to be my sweet, sweet rosemary. So, I foraged once, and I got some pollen. I forage again, and boom, I get this. And as you can see, the outline matches up. Dark, 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 light, light. Boom. Slots in perfectly. All right, so I've grown some workers. I've foraged. I've foraged again, and now I'm going to go to the market. All righty. Which means, again, I can pick any one thing. I could sell all pollen, which right now would just be... Five. And then the price would drop. That's not really great. I don't think I can fulfill any of these. Uh, yep. Yeah. If I had one Acacia, I could do it. Oh, so that's tricky. See, I was going to sell both of these Cherry Blossoms right now and get 12 points before the price drops. That's really awesome. But if I get an Acacia first, then um, I could sell... Well, I wouldn't be getting as much, but I'd get an extra action out of it. And no, no, no. I'm just going to sell. Boom, boom. Sell, sell. And uh, that gives me 12 points, and the price drops. 12 points. 10, and 1, 1. Woohoo! Okay. And so now, I am waiting to fan again. Although, unfortunately, these are in a bad spot. I could fan over here and make these two grow, or I could fan over here and make these two grow. Ideally, I should have been expanding this, because then I could fan three things at once. That would have been a bit more efficient. But say la vie. All right, so I think I've done everything, correct? I have grown... Um, I uh, foraged, I foraged a second time, and then I sold. And then, after I sold, the price dropped. And this game ends when four of these five prices bottom out, or when two of these three contract piles are emptied out. So, that is the nature of the race in this game. Alright, so that was my turn. And I next turn, I'm going to have to recall stuff. And let's see, meanwhile, the drone says... 
Cherry Blossoms. Phew, it is a good thing I moved when I did, because Cherry Blossoms... Uh, I'm sorry, well, it's my choice. Either Cherry Blossoms drop again in value, or uh, he takes the last Cherry Blossom. Now, I know what this... Or, no, or he takes a Cherry Blossom, which means he could take the Acacia, or he could take... Hmm... Okay, I do not want him to take Cherry Blossom, because remember, I'm trying to get at least two sets of each... I need to get another Cherry Blossom before the game is over, because if I've got two sets of everything, of all the Nectars, that's ten. So, but the same is true for Acacia. I've already lost one Acacia and one Wildflower. I'm about to lose... Right, I know one of these is Acacia, and I know this is Acacia. So, I know, um, you know, th this is... Ac all right. I do know... There is still wildflower. Okay, I'm gonna have him. I'm gonna have him trash this. I don't want him to trash prices yet, because that's just gonna rush the end of the game faster, and I might sell in the future because I can still make more of this stuff. So I'm gonna say he uh, takes this one, and yep, as predicted. So there is there is only one uh, cherry blossom or one flower in the cherry blossom field. And remember, normally they always go back face down, and it's just up to you to remember what these are. But I'm leaving it face up because I'm cheating, basically. Because I hate memory in games. All right. So that was his turn. And then uh, he says, hey, block the... Um, which one is it? Oh, block the forage space. All right. So I can't go there anymore until he changes his mind again. It's my turn. I'm out of stuff. So I'm going to spend a turn recalling. One, two, three, four, five. <sighs> yep. All right. So I've got five, which uh, means I want to get at least one more worker. So I'm maxing out. All right. And I get to do another scout. I get to peek again. Alrighty. I don't know anything about over here. And I don't... Let's see. What do I know of these? Oh, I know these are both... Because I've already taken both cherry blossoms here. So I know these must be other things. One of them must be acacia. One must be wildflowers. Um, but I don't know much about this. I'm going to go on ahead and peek at one of these. And I'll just peek at this. And hey, I know that's the acacia. Again, I would peek. I'd put it back face down so other players wouldn't know. I'm leaving it face up because I just don't want to have to memorize. Okay. So there we go. I've scouted... That was my turn. It's his turn again. And he says, Cherry Blossoms. So, he is now either going to um, trash the market for Cherry Blossom uh, honey, or he's going to take the last Cherry Blossom. And that means, well, I know where an acacia is. I know one of these is an acacia. So, I'll go on ahead and have him lose this. All right, so that's it. There are no more of these. He is done with that action. Which means in the future when this card comes up, he's just going to try and tank the price. And if he can't tank the price because it's already down, then that means he tanks any price that he wants if he were a player. In this case, since I'd be controlling, I'd tank any other price I want. All right, so he is done. And he is now going to... He's just going to continue to block that space. That's okay. That's the last space in the world I want to go because I am trying to keep my worker numbers lean. My turn. I got a bunch of workers. Where am I going? Um, let's see here. I need to start building up for Acacia. I need to... I need to do a lot of stuff. Um, but this means I could get another $5 one, or I could spend $5 to get another wild card. I could get another fanning action, or I could get another market action, since those two are blocked up there. What do I want to do? What do I want to do? Hmm. Okay. Um, well, I know whatever it is. I'm going to put it here because then that means I'll have my next place that I can get Rosemary. Although, wait. I don't know where the Rosemary is, do I? Yes, I do. Um, no. I know one of these is Rosemary, but I don't know which one. And I know one of these is Rosemary, but I don't know which one. I have not scouted enough. Okay, because one of these is Acacia. There's the okay, One is... All right. So maybe I don't want to fill that in right now. Although that would give me my the last worker I'm looking for. And I do a forage. So I maybe I get lucky. And if I don't get lucky, I'll get some more pollen. And the more pollen I have, the more valid it is to sell for big points. So yeah, I'm going to go on ahead and do that. Let's. But I still haven't decided which type. I've just chosen where I'm going to go. Do I want to make some more money? Do I want to spend some money to do a wild card? I do like those. Let's go on ahead and throw five points away, which I might regret later. And get one of the Queen's Decrees. And I will go on ahead. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. I've put this down here. What I've done is I have created a spot where I could do Wildflower. Which um, I know two of these are Wildflower. And I believe one of these is Wildflower. And But it's okay. I want to get Wildflower as well. <sighs> 
But I get to activate these things. If instead, I mean, I could start building up, but it would take two turns because I'd do this, and then I would do this, and then I'd have space to get the rosemary. Um, no, let's just go for it. Let's just, I mean, and hopefully I just get lucky. All right, so I, I've done that. And it means I'm going to activate this. I'll get to activate again later once I put something here. So that'll be nice. And this, by the way, will be the place where I can do the rosemary. So right now, I've done, I'm going to do all these. First of all, let's grow the sixth worker. And no more. I will grow no more workers. Uh, I'm just going to put those out of the way so I stop thinking about them. Okay. And I've done that. And I, I'm not going to go to shop because I literally have nothing to sell, which is kind of painful. I'm wasting this action. Because I'm, I'm just... I mean... Yeah, because I'm going to have nothing to sell. No, that's not true. If I fail, I'll get some more pollen. And you better believe I'll sell two pollen. So let's let's see what happens first. I'm going to go foraging. And I'm looking for... Um, yeah, what should we call it? So let's just come over here to the wildflowers. And I did not find a wildflower, which means I got some pollen, yo. My second pollen. Okay. And again, I would have to remember that this is a cherry blossom. It would go back face down so nobody else knows, but I'm just going to leave it face up because my memory is terrible. All righty. And um, let's see. Now, so that was my forge. I'm going to forge again and see if this time I can actually, because I'm up in my chances. And even if I don't, then I'll get another pollen, so I'll have three pollen to sell, so I can't lose. Let's check this one out. Okay. Wow. I, mi I missed it again. So I know for a fact these are both wildflowers now, but I cannot get them to slot them into the spot so that I could fan here and make three honey just like that. Alrighty. But I did get my third honey. Alrighty, so I have grown, I have foraged, I have foraged again to uh, much a failure and ridicule from all the other bees. And now I'm going to go to market, and you better believe I'm going to sell all this pollen, which means the price drops by one, doesn't matter how much I sell, but I did make 15 points. Nice, nice, nice. Here's a 20. Uh, all right. And by the way, like I said, everything is prototypes here. Uh, this is prototype money. These are prototype uh, honey markers, all the rest of it. Okay, so um, that was that. I now know everything that's in this area, though. But let's see what the drone's up to. The drone says, wildflowers, which means the drone is going to start killing the market for wildflowers or destroying one of those. Now, here's the thing. I don't need any more cherry blossoms. I'm not planning on getting three sets of everything, so I'll just let him trash that. Bye bye It's gone. And now he says, I want to block the market zone, so I cannot get one of those honeycombs. He's done. It is my turn. And, um, well, I would like to go harvest and actually fill this thing up and maybe trigger a fan action. Here's the problem, though. Um, wait, no. Yeah, how am I going to do that? Right. And actually, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that looks good. That looks good. That looks good. Okay, so but what tile am I going to take? I am... Well, I can't take these. I can't take those. If I want to take one of these, I would have to send in two worker bees because I'm already occupying that. I'm blocking myself, basically. Um, I'll go on ahead and... Uh, it might make sense to fan now. I think I'm going to take this. I'm going to slap it in right here, which means I'm going to get to forage... And I'm going to get to do whatever I want, which is probably going to be a second forage. And then I'm going to get to fan. And here's what I'm hoping. I'm going to hoping with these two forages, I fill up both of these spaces, and then I fan right here. And boom, 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 make a triple honey. Triple honey. All right, so, and I, I should be pretty confident about this. All right, so my first forage is going to be to come over here, where, surprise, you guessed it, wildflowers. All righty. And then my second forage, this is more of the gamble. I am looking for a... Um, oh, no! I already know where it is, because I found it. I, I will go forge it, because remember, this would have been face down. I will forge here. Boom! I got it. Slot it in there. All right, so I did a... Um, all right, I put this one down. I did a forge. I used the wild, and now I'm going to fan. I'll put the fan right there, which means I grow a little bit of everything. Some... Um, or, no, that one's here... And then some golden rosemary and some delicious wildflower. And just like that, I've got all the honey. Which means I could sell to this guy now, because he wants both of these. And I'll get five points out of it. And I will get an additional forage action afterwards. I get to forage for free. 
which I think is worth, you know, not getting five points worth, you know, getting a basically an extra worker action out of it. So that could be pretty cool. So that was my turn. Very happy with that. Then the drone says, hey, how about Acacia? So he is either going to take the last one of these tiles or he's going to crash the Acacia market. Now, I need two Acacia if I can get um, two sets of everything because I'm focusing on that while trying to keep my workers. So this one's already gone. This one's already gone. One of these is Acacia, and this is Acacia. I don't think I want him to take that. I'm going to have him crash the market a little bit. All right. And then he says, hey, time for me to block this area. All right. And it's my turn again. I've still got three workers. Hey, I could come over here, but I do not want to come here because I don't want to grow any more workers, which, again, is not normal. But um, it is. it could be a good time to go to market. It could be a good time to go to market. Which, how would I do? I remember, I want to start... I, okay, I want to make another wildflower cell. I haven't made any acacia cells yet. This one can't be an acacia cell, but it could be my... Oh, no, I already have the two rosemary. So, <gasps> yes, okay, so I need to spend a little bit of time making this an acacia cell, which means I'm not going to trigger anything right away. I'm going to build something here and here, and then that'll be an acacia, and I can go start collecting acacia. And in the meantime, i got to make another um, wild, uh, you know, a wildflower one as well, which I don't really have a good place. I'll have to, because that, that can't be a spot, that can't be a spot. I'll have to figure that out separately, but I'll worry about that later. Because uh, right now, I'm gonna next two turns are gonna be to fill these up so that I can go harvest acacia, put it there, and but so I, I know now I know where I'm putting it, but I don't know what I'm putting there. And, uh, also, because I won't be triggering an action immediately, I'm setting myself up for a big combo chain of make money and an action and an action a couple of turns from now. Which one should I do? Honestly, folks, I don't know, but I think I'm going to stop right there because that should give you a pretty good idea of the feel of Honey Buzz. Now, if you want to hear some final thoughts, you can hit that eye in the top right corner screen or follow the show notes in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.